Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. And so worship God acceptably and with reverence and awe, for our God is an all-consuming fire. Do we have any praisers in the house today? Do we have any thankful folk in the house today? Do we have any worshipers in the house today? Then praise ye the Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Sunday morning service. We welcome all those that are in the sanctuary today. We welcome those who are online on Zoom and on Facebook today. We welcome all of you today. But most of all, we are here to praise an awesome, awesome, an awesome God. Each and every one of us today has a reason to praise our God. And if you don't have one, let me tell you, just wait a minute. God's going to do something for everybody. So we all have a reason to be thankful. We all have a reason to praise God. We all have a reason to worship God. Worship God. Worship ye the Lord because he is good. And his love truly, truly endures forever. Oh, let us pray. Our most awesome and wonderful God. Lord, we come to you this morning first and foremost to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for all you've done. We thank you, Lord, for just waking us up this morning, God, and having us come before you to hear your word, to praise your name, to lift you up, and to spread the gospel through all nations. Lord, we ask this morning that you bless our preacher of the hour as he comes forward. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless our pastor, God. And Lord, we ask you to bless each and every one that's involved in today's service. God, bless the musicians, bless the audiovisual. But God, most of all, we just ask you just to bless each and every one of us. Lord, you've given us a reason to praise you. And Lord, even, even if the preacher doesn't preach, even if musicians don't play, God, we're going to praise your name anyway. So we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We bless your holy name. And we just ask that you just be not a part of the service, God, but be the entire service today. In Jesus' mighty and awesome name, we pray and give thanks. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Can we be in the clap our hands and give God's name glory? Truly, we serve a great God. Is that all right? If that's your testimony, come on, lift up your voice and lift up a hallelujah all over the house. You can even do that in your stream. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Amen. Is our God, sing with me how great is our God, for all will see how great, how great. Is our God? Oh, oh, how great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? For all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, for your the name. Oh! 
Yes, I'm praising my way through just to be closer to you. I'm chasing after you. Hey, I'm chasing after you. Hey, I'm praising. church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. We are truly blessed to be in the house of the Lord this morning with great singing and great atmosphere being set by praise and worship. Thank you, gentlemen. Amen. God is so awesome. He's a good God, and we need him more and more every day. Amen. Amen. This is the fifth Sunday, the final Sunday of the greatest month of the year. I'm sorry, January uh, the 29th, 2023. These are the announcements for today. Just reminding you of our theme uh, for 2023, Refining the Fellowship, and from Proverbs chapters 27, 17, and Psalm 66, 10. Amen. Get those into your normal reading pattern, and you'll find out where we are going this upcoming year. I made an announcement last week. Uh, letters for the 2023 pledge a thon are in the mail. Uh, please submit your pledge. We are thankful for the members. The pledge is totaling $4,550. Amen. We are already out off to a great start. Amen. So continue to uh, meet your pledges and make your pledges so that we can handle some of the ministerial things we would like to do this year. Again, thank you, thank you, and thank you for your commitments, amen, to the Craig Memorial Community Church. God is an awesome God. Amen. amen. All choir members are asked to return their robes by today. If you have your robes today, we got a no gather a great number of them on yesterday. Uh, saw some <laughs> robes from some people who took great care of their robes. Amen. So we ask if you have a robe at home, you could bring it to the church today. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, the CMCC Children's Sunday School uh, has started. And uh, we ask that you sign in on our website so your children can be blessed by knowing the word of God. Listen to the stories of the Bible. Bring your kids on. We are here at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, 8.30 Central Standard Time, and I can't wait to see you. Sunday School with Craig Memorial Community Church. That's right. We sing, we dance, we listen. Amen. Thank you again, Sister Glorietta Foley, for all that you do to be a tremendous blessing to our children. Amen. Amen. If, in, if you know anyone in the penal system, please let the outreach ministry know. Uh, our goal and our objective is to be able to reach out to those who are in the penal system, that they will know the word of God and that someone cares about them. Amen. <clears throat> so we want to add them to the mailing list so we can send them information. The food bank was here on last Friday, uh, so we're thankful to each and every one of you who took advantage of the free food that was 
provided by the food bank that was delivered to our parking lot on last Friday. The fourth Friday in February is the next time that they will be here. So if you know anyone who's in need of items, of food, who needs food of any kind, please invite them to come to your church, the Craig Moore Community Church, where the food bank will be every fourth Friday of the month. Amen. Craig Morrill is open. Heavy emphasis is to all. We maintain safe social distancing. On third Sundays, we have safe wafer and juice kits. All we ask that you do is to sign in. Amen. Amen. Church attendance is important. We like to fellowship and be together around the word of God. If you can see me on Zoom, we're so very glad that you are a part of our service via Zoom. And we just ask that you share these numbers with others. Amen. We have our Hour of Power on Wednesday night, which is our prayer meeting from 7 to 7.30. At 7.30, we have our Bible study, and we're in the last chapter of the book of Luke, about to finish the book of Luke, and move on to the book of Acts. This is our study as we fellowship together around the Word of God. It is a great time had by all, especially the praise and worship and all the songs and the encouragement and testimonies that take place before Bible study even begins. I'm grateful to each and every one of you who thought it not robbery to tune in from your homes on Wednesday evening to be a part of the Bible study and the prayer service. Our Sunday school is 9.30 a.m. for adults, and we have it for our children as well. We just ask that you tune in online or come down to the sanctuary, amen, and be a part of our Sunday church school. Intercessory prayer is on Friday evening, 7 p.m., we just ask that you tune in and pray for our country, our community, uh, and our church. The country DF is in dire need of prayer at this particular time as unfortunate incidents and police brutalities and things have taken place. So many things that burden our hearts. And we realize that as a country who generates trillions of dollars a year, as a country where there's freedom and there is protection, there's also a lot of problems. So we need to keep our country lifted up in prayer. On the list of your screen are those to remember in prayer. Uh, if you cannot jot their names down, just uh, remember them. Just say, God, please bless those who are on the prayer list at the Craig Memorial Community Church. And just to let you know that some people whose names were on the list are no longer on the list because God is a prayer answering God. Amen. If you don't believe it, just pray and see what happens. He hears and answers our prayers. Maybe not always in the split second we want it, but he is always right on time with our blessings. That's the kind of God that we serve. Your tithes and offerings, we're so very glad that you can give to this great church, the Craig Moore Community Church. My humble, biased opinion, one of the best churches <laughs> this side of heaven, amen. You may do so by cash apping us, by mailing your checks to the church, or by calling Brother Fred Smith. And if you're in the sanctuary, you can drop them in the wood basket in the center aisle. And we're so very glad that this year, again, we're off to a great start. Let's keep up the good work, amen. Because God has some tremendous blessings in store for us. No, we don't give because we think he's going to give us a, this mysterious check that comes in the mail. We do it out of obedience because God says, prove to me now that he will not open up the windows of heaven and pour us out of blessing we don't have room to receive. And as a person who's got blessings that were poured out on him that I did not have room to receive, I am a living witness to the giving and receiving from God. Because he gives to me so I can give again. He gives to you so you can give again. So he can give to you again so you can give again. So he can give to you again so you can give again. And he'll give to you again so you can give again. Amen. And that's why you can't beat his giving because the more you give, he'll give it right back to you. Well, January birthdays. This is unfortunately the final Sunday to celebrate the awesome people born in the month of January. So today we say happy birthday to one of our newest members and a newlywed, Sister Jean Coates. Happy birthday. And we hope that your husband has spoiled you rotten on your birthday. 
Amen. Shannon Gant, happy birthday on Tuesday. We're wishing you all God's blessings on your birthday, and may God bless you with many, many, many more because you were born in the greatest month of the year. Amen. <laughs> Outreach ministry will have a meeting on Tuesday uh, at 7.30, 7.30 p.m. Uh, so all of you tune in online to the meetings to be a part of our outreach ministry. Also, I want to say thanks to all the men who helped clean up the church on yesterday, Brother Longus and uh, Brother Coates and my son Andrew and others. We're so very thankful to God, to each and every one of you who able to came out, come out on yesterday, Brother Fred Smith and others that we're so very grateful that you came out to help out. And Brother Herman Harad, as always, thank you so much, Brother Herman, for being that constant person who always helps, Brother Sam Foster as well. And if I left out anybody, I'm so grateful and thankful to the men who thought it not robbery to sacrifice that, son, that Saturday, where there's no football, but sacrifice that Saturday to come out and make our church a more cleaner, nicer place. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the fifth Sunday, and it is pastor's few days he has off, and we have a preacher in the house. Amen. Amen. So he needs no introduction. He will come and introduce himself in a few moments, uh, and he will be, a, we pray that he's a tremendous blessing to you, as he always is to us. So after the next selection from this wonderful praise ensemble, uh, we'll have our preacher of the hour. Amen. Amen. Encourage him as he comes. Give him a hearty amen, and he will not keep you past 3 p.m. <laughs> amen. <laughs> there is a word from the Lord, but I don't think it takes that much time. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. Anybody with a testimony that they simply love the Lord on today? Come on, if that's your testimony, why don't you lift up a praise right there? Come on, if you really love him, open up your mouth and tell him. Say, I love you, Lord. Come on, he still delights in the, in the words of his children. Lift up your voice and just say, God, I love you. God, I thank you for waking me up. God, I worship you. Hallelujah. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you. I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me in such a special way, and that's why I praise you, and I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me way back on Calvary. And that's why I praise you, and I lift you up, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul. for me way back on Calvary and that's why I praise you and I lift you up I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise And that's why my heart is filled with praise. 
That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh. Continue to worship the Lord this morning. Amen. Come on, continue to bless him if your heart is filled with praise. If you know that you're coming into the sanctuary, is not in vain. If you know that you're driving down the highways and the byways, is not in vain. Why don't you bless the name of the Lord on this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we bless the name of the Lord today for the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous will run to him and be saved. Hallelujah, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, our feet shall stand within thy gates. O Jerusalem, the humble shall hear him and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. But just in case you don't want to bless the Lord with me, on today I'll bless him all by myself. I'll lift up his name all by myself. I'll shout hallelujah. All by myself. Thank you, Lord. That's why my heart is filled with praise. God's been too good for me to sit down on him this morning. God has been too good for me to sit down on him this morning. Oh, I'm so thankful that God enabled me to come to the house one more time. I'm so glad that God spoke to me. Amen. Preaching is not something that comes easy. But it requires we as the people of God to have an obedience to God to hear what God wants us to say and then say what God wants us to say, whether we want to or not. Amen. People don't understand that when you have to stand behind this sacred desk, God will cause you to experience the word that he gives for people for you to deal with on your own. You wonder sometimes if you're even worthy, but I thank God that though I made mistakes, he still called me, that he still used me. And that he's still blessing. Amen. 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 I want to thank Pastor for this opportunity to share on this morning. You know, for those of us who are associate ministers here, no pastor has this thing. He asks you where you're going to be on a particular Sunday. And when Pastor uh, asked me where you're going to be fifth Sunday this month, I said, uh, Reverend Smallwood put me down to be worship leader. He said, find somebody to do it for you. And from there, I knew what the expectation was for this morning. But thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. And I was wondering why God had begun to speak to me in the way that he had begun to speak to me in a couple, in, for the past couple of weeks. And I, one of my responses was, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles or you're able to join the uh, look on the screens this morning, I want to invite you to... Uh, the Gospel according to Luke, Luke chapter 12, verses 35 and 36, and verse 48. Luke chapter 12, verses 35 and 36, and then we're going to jump down to verse 38. Uh, when you found it, say amen. If you can see the screen, say amen. amen. If you're happy, you know it, say amen. 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 The word of God reads, uh, Luke 12, 35, be dressed, ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. Verse 48, but, when, but the one who does not know and does things deserving uh, punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much will be asked. I'm going to read that second part again. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has, who, who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. God, we come into the sanctuary, Lord God, to exalt and lift up your name this morning, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for this meal by way of your word that you have prepared for the nourishment of our souls, O oh God. And we pray, Lord God, as we sit at this table, as we dine 
at this table as we commune with you that you will allow this word to speak to each and every individual person, Lord God. Lord God, oftentimes we find ourselves in places and situations where we try to apply your word to someone else without first applying it to us, oh God. So Lord God, we take the speck out of our eyes on this morning and we receive what it is that you have for us, Lord God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will prepare the hearts of your people even now, Lord God, to receive what word you have for them. I pray, Lord God, even as I stand behind this desk and can proclaim this word, that you will prepare even my heart, Lord God, that you will prepare it to receive the word that you have for me, Lord God, that when we leave this place, we will never, ever be the same. Oh God, we pray for your glory to continue to rest, rule, and abide in this place. God, we pray that your Shekinah glory will continue to fill the temple, oh God. Lord God, that there may be an understanding and a comprehension of your word. Move like only you can. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen, amen. To whom much is given or has been given, much will be required. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Uh, I'd like to borrow, and the audiovisual ministry is going to help me this morning, from a popular lyric of Billy Lee Preston and Bruce Fisher and tag this text this morning, if I may, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Brother Fred said, that's all we can play. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But for those who have been around for a little while and are, and are willing to admit that you want, once listened to secular music, it's okay. There's no shame. Billy Lee Preston also did soul music and gospel music, too. But you might recall this number one on the Billboard Hot Chart 1974 lyric, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. He goes on to say, you got to have something if you want to be with me. You know, I did some research on this lyric, and sources suggest that not only is the writer of this song referring to uh, just the desire to be in relationship or have a relationship, but he is really suggesting that he does not want a single-sided or one-sided relationship, but that both parties should contribute to it. Uh, it seems, my brothers and sisters, that it has become a very foreign idea that when we are in relationship that there is some level of give and take, some level of compromise and sacrifice. Uh, while we should be engaging in dialogue, there should be a time of speaking and a time of listening. Reverend Kennedy often says, God gave us two ears to listen and one mouth to speak. That means we should listen more and speak less. Uh, we find ourselves, however, on, however, only wanting our point and our side of the story to be heard and received. Uh, we want the other person to hear us out, but don't want uh, to hear what they have to say. The truth is, uh, we have, in my, opinion, in, in my opinion, become a generation or a people of takers and receivers, but limit what we give back to others. Uh, we want to know that when we engage with others, what is in it for me? When we go to a place, we ask, how is this place going to benefit me? We ask, uh, when we ask someone to do a favor, we go into it with the expectation of the reciprocation of the favor to us. It's even true in corporate America that when we accept positions of employment that we must sign EEOC documents saying that we won't engage in quid pro quo discrimination. That is the offering of your employees benefits things like promotion and, and a raise in, in return for certain and sometimes inappropriate favors. As we watch the news and look throughout our communities, there is an increase in theft and robberies where people will take something that you worked long and hard for and in an instant be joy riding in your car, walking in your tennis shoes, wearing your jacket and spending your money. Can I just be honest and real with us today, my brothers and sisters? 
The fact is that we are living in a time of lax and lazy individuals, where able-bodied persons would rather lay in someone else's home all day to, than to get up, be productive citizens, and get a job. Uh, when dinner time comes, they're the first to the table, and when rent times comes, they're nowhere to be found. And yes, even in the church, if I'm to be honest, the house of God, where we expect to see people working and serving and giving with a heart of gratitude, it seems that people come when they want to receive something from the Lord, but place limits on what they can do for him. Pastor says that 20, often says that 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And Pastor, I'm not sure if that statistic is accurate today or the gap has continued to grow even more in recent years. Uh, but, 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 but it seems that that, that that truth remains true, that there's a few people doing the work of the church, the few people coming to serve the Lord, the few people coming to do what God has called them to do, yet so many people whose names are on the roster. I knew I wouldn't get many amens on that one, but y'all told me I can be honest with you this morning. And while we should be influencing the world, we too treat God like some spiritual sugar daddy, expecting, us, expecting him to bless us when we need him, hear us when we call him, supply all of our needs, heal our family, pick us up when we're down, dry our tears when we cry, get us out of situations that we put ourselves into and give us peace in the time of the storms. Yet, my brothers and sisters, we don't want to bless God. And the Bible says, yeah, I will bless them that bless me. Amen. Uh, uh, we don't want to listen to him when he speaks. Right. We want to do all the talking and prayer, but we don't want to spend time hearing what God has expected for us to do. Amen. We don't want to give the time, the talent or the time. I mean, God says you can give one of the three or a combination of the three. We don't want to get none of it. We run to the sanctuary when we're well. We, uh, we, we, don't want to, we don't want to run to the sanctuary when we're well. In fact, when we're sick, we want all the church people to come to our house and pray for us and, and put us on the prayer list. Amen? Come to my house and serve me communion. But when we're feeling well, we have too many other things to prioritize coming into the house of God. Uh, we, we don't want to encourage somebody else when they're down, but we want to receive phone calls when, uh, when we're down that for somebody to encourage us and keep us lifted up. We don't want to obey the instructions of God, and we cause calamity in the lives of others through gossip, slander, and deceitfulness. Again, can I just be real today, church? I won't be before you long. I know y'all want to throw tomatoes at me, and that's quite all right. Uh, we, we, uh, we want better singing, but won't join the choir. We want better preaching, but won't answer the call that God has on our lives. We want better audio and better video, but we don't want to come out and volunteer. We want solutions, but we sometimes are the problems. Come on, uh, 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 the, come on, text preach with me today. To whom much is given, much is required. And if God is going to trust us with his blessings, his peace, his anointing, his call, his church, his ministry, then we must know that much more will be asked of us. As Pastor announced our theme for this year, Refining the Fellowship, I believe that God is calling us out of a place of, of the pan pandemic mentality. For far too long, we have been comfortable making excuses for why we cannot Yet we still have the same or even greater expectation for God to move in our lives. Now that, uh, now that you got what you need, let me give you what you want. I told you I won't be before you long. In our text today, Jesus warns that he may come back to a sleeping world in the dead of night, uh, but blessed are the faithful who are welcome and ready for his return. Blessed are the servants, verse 37 says, who the Lord finds watching. But just as we are waiting for Christ's return, we must also be on the watch for the enemy who seeks to distract us from God's promises in our lives. We do not know when Christ's return is, but so it is, our, it, is our, it is to our benefit that we stay ready, as the young people say, so we don't have to get ready. Or maybe the young people don't say that, maybe just my generation said that. Uh, and risk missing Jesus Christ at the rapture of the church. So what does it mean to be watching? See, sometimes we say we hear watch and we think that we're supposed to be looking at what other people are doing in their lives. But God says and in the Greek to watch means to be awake and alert. How many times we find ourselves asleep when we should be in the presence of God, sleep when we should be communing with him, sleep when we should be reading his word. And yes, even sleep 
when we come into the sanctuary. Time is up for sleeping, my brothers and sisters. God has sounded a spiritual alarm, and we must wake up and be watchful servants that he is calling us to be. We must be good stewards of this life that he has blessed us with and servants to the ministry to which he has called us. In verse 46, our text speaks to those who once believed but who have walked away from the faith. And it's so sad to say that over the past couple of years, we've experienced this pandemic and uh, people have left the church and uh, don't want to get online and don't want to call in and don't want to call back, call in. And there are some who have walked away from the faith. They say, I don't believe anymore. I don't have the same feeling that I once had when it comes to the Lord. And they've chosen to believe other things and the lies and the deceits of the enemy. Uh, uh, the, scripture, the scriptures tell us it is impossible for those who have been enlightened, those who have uh, once been believers, those who once have experienced God, who have tasted the heavenly gift. And I think that's so powerful. We, ta- we as believers have opportunity to taste the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away, to be brought back to repentance because their loss because to their laws, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. And we know that all, all, the, uh, all the gruesome things that we hear that happened when Jesus Christ went on the cross. And we as believers, when we fall away from those teachings and, and those beliefs, we literally crucified Jesus Christ again because we know without a shadow of a doubt what God, Jesus Christ did for us, but yet we choose to no longer believe it. This is why our coming together is essential. And one of the things that God God taught me throughout the pandemic and um, in the passing, even of my grandmother, I had some, you know, very, uh, you know, intimate moments with God. He said this, we need one another. No matter how much the news was telling us to be socially distanced and separating ourselves from one another, I think what they should have been saying is we should be physically distanced to protect ourselves from the virus. But I don't think we should have ever disconnected and alienated ourselves from other people because we need other people in this life. In fact, let me give you a reference text for this morning. Uh, Hebrews 10, 25 says it this way. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So Christ is saying, we, we, we as the church say that we recognize the signs of the time and we believe that Christ is coming back and looking to rapture his church. We look at all the things that are going on around us and what Jesus is telling, what God is telling us in his word is the closer we see ourselves to approaching the end of the the end of the age the more we should be coming together the more we should be encouraging the more we should be fellowshipping together the more we should be worshiping together the more we should be praying for each other Uh, we recognize the sign of the times that we are living in we must bind together as the body of Christ keeping all members encouraged through prayer showing love and compassion and extending mercy Verse 47 says, but there is punishment for those who choose to walk away from the faith, even more severe than those who believe. Uh, The Bible declares that they will be beaten with many blows. So let us not find ourselves comfortable as minimalist Christians, as basic believers, as slothful saints, and as a lazy lay people. Let us get back to the desire to be used by God to serve him with gladness, to enter into his gates with with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. See, we praise God and we clap our hands we say that but we need to put that thing in action that when we enter into the sanctuary we enter truly with thanksgiving say thank you lord for allowing the doors of craig memorial community church to still be open to come into our seats and bless the name of the lord for he is good let us return to being the vibrant church without even if the lights were off and and the spotlights are off we can still be a vibrant church on fire for the lord because god has placed a fire in each and every one of us you know the one church that God is looking for without spot or wrinkle. Let us renew our passion for ministry, that we help carry the load of outreach and ministry that God has called us to do. Now, it's true, my brothers and sisters, that God has not all called, called us all to do the same thing, but he's called us all to do something. Get off your behind and do what God has called you to do. Let us continue in the singing of songs, hymns, and spiritual songs, lifting up the name of Jesus through corporate praise and worship. Let us not become so busy and distracted that we forget to pray for and 
and encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us not forsake the assembling of the saints, but let us come together encouraging one another as the day of Christ's return is near. Let us not fall into the pattern of this world doing nothing and reaping nothing, but let us conform to the patterns of the word of God that w- and what is required to prepare for Jesus' second coming. The Bible says to whom much was, has been given, much will be required. Jesus was given the sin of the world. Uh, Jesus was given our sin, our sickness and iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was put on him. And, but by his stripes, we receive healing. And through his death, we gain access to eternal life. To whom much is given, much will be required. Let us not allow a virus, which we said was designed for God to bring us closer to him, to cause us to move further further away from what he requires us to do. God still has a work for us to do. With every breath that we breathe, he is deserving of all the glory. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Every time we open our eyes, we need to be looking at God and to God, the author and the perfecter of our faith. For who the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame is set down at the right hand of God interceding See, that's not in my notes. On our behalf, despite the mess that we do, despite when we refuse to do what he has told us to do. When we realize that we have activity of our limbs, we ought to lift up the name of Jesus. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. When we realize that we are clothed in our right mind, we should have our mind fixed and stayed on Jesus. That we may be able to walk in, no, live in that perfect peace that God has promised us. When we are able to go to work and go to the grocery store and go to the dinner party and go anywhere else that we go, let us not forget children of God. God, to go down to the church and fellowship with the other believers to whom much is given, much will be required. In the gospel, according to Billy Lee Preston, nothing from nothing will yield nothing, but you have to have something if you want to be in relationship with God. Let us not get it twisted. God does not need us to do what he does. God does not need us to continue to bless us. God does not need us to continue to heal us. God does not need us to continue to wake us up every morning. God does not need us to do anything that he blesses us with. But the least that we can do as children of God, as believers, as ones who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, as ones who desire eternal life, as ones who want to make it into heaven, as those who want the titles that we have, we need to take on the responsibility and obey the word of God and do what is required of us. The least that we can do is say, yes, Lord, when he calls us. The least we can do is say, yes, God, I'll go just like we once did when he first called us into ministry. Starting today, stop saying what you can't do and start believing what God can do through you. Let us not become weary in our well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God can do all things but fail. Don't give up on God. Stay in the fight and stay in the faith to whom much is given. To whom much has been given. Much is required. Amen. Amen. As we stand all over the church, those of you who are able to, as I, as I shared, as, I, as God began to pour this word into me, he began to remind me of the things that I myself needed to step up and do in ministry. Amen. I'm not going to say that he didn't deal with me on this word. Amen. And I do earnestly believe that we have a responsibility, church, to be that church that God is coming back and looking for. We learn so much from the word of God about how God has a tendency to stretch us and to prune us and to refine us so that we can continue to grow in him so that we can continue to grow. When newcomers come to the faith, we have conversations with them about having to sometimes get out of their comfort zone. And the truth is, 
many of us have found ourselves in our place of comfort. We don't want to be stretched anymore. We don't want to be pruned and cut back and admonished anymore. We don't want to go through the fire of refining that we may come forth as pure gold. But Pastor has told us this is the year of the refining of the fellowship. One of the scriptures Pastor uh, shared with us in our theme, he talked about how the silver has to be refined. And oftentimes we want to receive the benefit of the fine silver. You know, the kind that's not going to turn your skin color. The good stuff. And God is looking for some good silver here at Craig Memorial Community Church. It means that we might have to stop being so comfortable and saying that I'm not going to put no clothes on, I'm just going to cut the TV on. I'm not going to put any shoes on, I'm just going to sit in my living room and put my legs up. But I'm going to allow all the other things that I have to do to distract me from being in the place where I can fully commit myself to the worship of the most living God. Now, all these things that we have, the technology, the Zoom, the Facebook, the YouTube, all that stuff is amazing for those who need to use it. For those who need to use it. But the truth is, there are some of us who go anywhere in the world that we want to go. We do everything that we want to do. But when it's time, time to come to the church, oh, the COVID is still out there. Oh, the virus is still out there. It's fine. We separated. We got people got masks on. People have been vaccinated. We have protocols in place. We have signing sheets and all these types of things. But when you go to the grocery store, nobody's checking you in. When you go to those birthday parties, nobody's checking you in. Somebody might be checking you out, but nobody's checking you in. As we refine the fellowship at Craig, as we expect the church to grow, as we expect the church to move to the next level, more will be required of all of us. God has blessed us. God has gifted us. And there is more to do. There may be someone who is not a member of this church. You may say, they don't apply to me. One of the expectations of coming to Christ is that you get in a Bible teaching and believing church. That you too may share the word of the Lord with a lost and dying world. So you don't have to hook the word of God applies to you too. There are three calls today. The first is to the loss. One who has not believed in Jesus Christ. One who has not accepted him as your Lord and Savior. The Bible just declares that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. The second is for those who may have gotten comfortable and maybe have not yet fallen asleep but are at least napping on the things of God. Who in a long-term, three-year, almost three-year slumber from the work of the ministry, from outreach, from prayer, from praise and worship, from gathering with one another. The Bible tells us even as we see the day of Christ approaching, we should be assembling all the more and encouraging one another even more. And then the last call is for those who are working in the church, who show up but have been comfortable with doing the very least that you can do to get by checking, 
the box and saying, I showed up. Checking the box to say, I did my responsibility that day. Checking the box, but not challenging yourselves to greater that I believe that God has for each and every one of us. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the reminder, Lord God, that if we want more, we have to give more. That if we want to see more, Lord God, we have to do more. If we want to experience more, God, there's some things that we're going to have to be uncomfortable with. So, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for each and every one of us under, each of every one of us under the sound of my voice in the sanctuary, on Facebook, on Zoom, on the conference call, on YouTube, oh God, and pray, Lord God, that you will move on our heart, Lord God, and speak to us individually and tell us exactly what it is that you need us to do, Lord God. Lord God, open our hearts to, to say yes to you again. Open our spirits, Lord God, to want to move in accordance and alignment with your spirit, oh God. Bless us, Lord God, as we bless you, oh God. Lord God, remind us that there is a work for us to do. Not just talking about what we see, Lord God, but doing something about it. So Lord God, for the one who is in category one who needs to accept you as their Lord and Savior, we pray, Lord, that you will give them the strength to even type in the chat, I receive you, Lord. I believe in the death of your son, Jesus, and I accept him into my heart. Lord, to the one who has been napping from the work that you have called them to do, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that you will allow the alarm to sound and that they might get dressed up and girded up with the things that you have called them to put on, Lord God, and return to the work that you have called us to do, oh God. For the one, Lord God, who is doing the bare minimum, oh God. We pray, Lord God, that you will give them the strength to not focus on what they can do, Lord God, but the faith to know what you can do through them, oh God. We pray, Lord God, that you will continue to move in our sanctuary, move in this sanctuary, move, Lord God, not just in Craig Memorial, and just in Craig Memorial, but Lord God, throughout the entire body of Christ, Lord God. That there may be another raising up, Lord God, of believers, Lord God, who are not ashamed to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord God, we pray for our churches, Lord God, that, that they will be flooded with people once again, not because things are bad, Lord God, but because we just want to worship you in fellowship. We pray, Lord God, that you will continue to bless us, Lord God, like only you can. Lord God, we will be so careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. Let us not, Lord God, be distracted by the schemes of the enemy, Lord God. But let us focus on the promises of God. Lord God, we stand firm today declaring that no longer will we sleep on the things that you have called us to do, Lord God. But Lord God, we come declaring and making a promise to you, Lord God, that we will do exactly what it is that you have called us to do. Move on our behalf, oh God, like only you can. Move in this church, Lord God, like only you can. Move, Lord God, even through the airwaves and through Zoom, Lord God, wherever people may be, that we all may feel your presence, Lord God. Allow this word to speak to each and every one of our hearts, oh God. And Lord God, also allow us to respond not to me, not to pastor, but allow us to respond to you with our service. God, we bless you, we praise you, and we lift you up. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Seated in the presence of God.
You've been so, you've been so good. Oh, yes. You've been, you've been so, you've been so good. Hey. Yes, Lord. So been so good Ooh. and I just want to say oh. I just I want to say I just want to the Lord. And I just want to thank this ensemble this morning uh, by way of uh, Brother Sean on the keys and Brother D'Angelo, our psalmist this morning, Brother Delante on the drums. Uh, they are true testaments and example of how when God calls, they're willing to answer. Amen. And be there. Amen. And not give half, but give all. Amen. So thank you, brothers, for uh, coming out this, this morning and worshiping with us. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all I have for you all today. I'm ready to go home and go to sleep because I was out here yesterday morning. Too. Pastor used to talk about the, or Phil does, uh, the, the after church nap, and there's nothing like it. And uh, my sofa is calling my name on today. Amen. So let's stand on the sanctuary as we, uh, uh, as we, as we are dismissed from this place. Amen. Amen. Our Lord and our God, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for this time in your presence. We thank you, oh God, for the worship and the praise. We thank you for how your anointing moved to this place today, Lord God. Lord God, we pray, Lord, that you would bless each and every person uh, online and in person, Lord God, on the phone, Lord God, and those who will be watching later, oh God. And we pray that you will bless them with every good thing that they deserve, oh God. And now unto you, oh God, who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless, before your presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And the people of God said, amen, amen. And why don't you just shout hallelujah and give God some praise, amen. God bless you.